Hi, English 1301 students. So it's Dr. Murray again, and I'm here to this time talk about uh, logical fallacies. I started to touch on this in the previous video, uh, but I was running out of time, so I'm going to have to address it in this second video. So um, as I said about logical fallacies, they are illogical statements that may sound reasonable or true, but are actually deceptive or dishonest. This is the definition from that sheet I asked you to read. Um, you know, once you become kind of aware and attuned to these logical fallacies, which involves reading not only the definitions, but getting used to some of these examples that they give you in, in this, in this sheet I asked you to read, which by the way, does not cover all of the logical fallacies. It just gives you sort of a sampling of some of the usual suspects. But what I will say is once you become aware of this, you will start to notice that sometimes very educated, um, high profile people, I mean, I notice this often with politicians, that they'll be asked to come on a, a news show and they will make faulty arguments. They will make arguments that are logically very problematic. Um, sometimes they do it just because it's easy. Sometimes they do it because they want to really rile up their base um, uh, with very emotional arguments without necessarily dealing with the facts or with logic. Um, it's also, it's just much easier to make a bad argument than it is to make a good one. To make a good one, you have to be informed, not only about your side of the issue, but about the other side's side of the issue. Um, you know, and, and, a, and an honest arguer will acknowledge, you know, often where the other side might make a smaller point that they're correct about. Um, you know, um, w this is something we could get into discussing at some point, but I will just say, um, but oftentimes, you know, they're being asked to, 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 to talk in a short segment of time and they'll figure out that a very emotionally potent, um, brief, uh, charged argument that will, you know, that will appeal to maybe their least discerning members of their base, the, the people who are least likely to, you know, sort of look closely at the argument is, is what they want to go for. Um, and it's, you know, when you see it, it, it's, it's very disappointing because it, you know, oftentimes, you know, that some of these people know better. Um, some of them maybe don't, so, you know, I don't know, these days, we do have some elected f officials whose, um, you know, intelligence level is, 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 is not what you would hope it would be, or their education level or something. But, um, but many of them are lawyers. They're very, you know, they've been to law school and some of them, they've been to law school at the best schools in the country. And yet they will engage in, um, using logical fallacies, which are, again, might seem to some people to be valid arguments, but they're not. Um, and the logical part of logical fallacies is important because what a lot of these kinds of arguments are lacking is logos. And so that's important because I think we'll see this semester the way that some people will go to great lengths to make certain kinds of arguments. But meanwhile, though they are working overtime making arguments that have these emotional qualities to them, they are, you know, sometimes leaving out or ignoring or, or cutting corners on logic or facts, which is also part of Logos. And that's a huge problem. I mean, it's just, uh, uh, it's not how you really make a solid argument. So let's look at at least a few of these um, um, e examples. And you can certainly pause the video and open up the PDF that was in readings, etc. to look, to look with me at, at um, this sheet of logical fallacies. But um, I also expect that you've already read it. But like one here is, personal attack. And I think I mentioned this in the previous video that this is a very common one. And it's defined here as, and, and you sometimes hear it referred to by its Latin name, ad hominem um, attack. 
Um, this fallacy tries to divert attention from the facts of an argument by attacking the motives or character of the person making the argument. And the example they give is the public should not take seriously Dr. Mason's plan for improving county health services. He's a former alcoholic whose wife recently divorced him. Well, the person arguing is supposed to be arguing with Dr. Mason's plan, which if it's a plan, then it's not really about Dr. Mason's personal life. It's, it's, is it a good plan or not a good plan? I mean, sometimes people will put forth a plan and then they'll step away from, from what's going on. And it's, so it's not about that person. It's about, is that a good plan for going forward? Well, the person arguing here clearly doesn't want to deal with the issue of whatever the plan involves. They would rather just say, Hey, you know, the guy that made the plan is a former alcoholic, as if, as if, you know, if somebody is a former alcoholic, how does that have a negative effect on the plan? I mean, maybe they've completely gotten their life together. Um, but even if they were currently an alcoholic, it doesn't necessarily mean that their plan is bad. Um, same with the divorcing wife. I mean, uh, uh, Plenty of people get divorces and sometimes maybe it's the best thing to do for people to live their lives. Um, but this person is trying to cast dispersions on this person's character because they don't like the plan, but they apparently don't feel confident in being, being able to logically argue against the plan. Okay, I'm just giving you a very thorough um, logical refutation of this person's use of a logical fallacy. And that one, of course, I, as I said before, was personal attack. Um, uh, I'll use as another example, um, this one called misleading statistics, because um, statistics seem often like they're a very solid form of support for an argument they're making. And statistics tend to be something you um, would equate with making a logical argument. Um, but sometimes, first of all, if your statistics are faulty in some way, if they're gotten from a source that itself is not very reliable, then, um, you know, then obviously they're not going to enhance your logos in your argument. But it will also sometimes happen that it's not a matter like in this case we're going to look at it's not a matter of the statistics being wrong it's that they're being used in a way that is deceptive um i don't know if you've ever heard this cliche that says um uh there are three kinds of lies lies damn lies and statistics it's a it's a joke kind of but it's a way of of you know somebody may came up with that joke because it's a way of saying statistics which supposedly are are supposed to be this very reliable way of understanding the facts can be sometimes used in a way that's deceptive and this is an example of that so it says although statistics are a powerful form of factual evidence they can be misre misrepresented or distorted in an attempt to influence an audience and the example they give is women will never, and this, I'm not arguing this, this is the example given in this sheet. Women will never be competent firefighters. After all, 50% of the women in the city's training program failed the exam. So whoever's making this argument is saying, you know, women can't be competent firefighters. 50% of the women that took the, tr the exam uh, after taking the training program, 50% of them failed, right? But then the analysis of the example says, here the writer has neglected to mention that there were only two women in the program. Because this st statistic is not based on a large enough sample, it cannot be used as evidence. So there were two people in the program, one failed. So only one person failed, but it's presented as 50% of the people that failed. You'll sometimes see people manipulate statistics by saying something like, Almost 50% of the people who da 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 da. And then you go, well, why are they saying almost? What is the exact number? And then you look and the exact number is 46. They rounded 46 up to 50. And so they're saying almost 50%. 
it's it's you know it's a little like pricing something 399 it's uh you know it's four dollars uh in that case it, it, it's one cent away from four dollars in this case it's um it's really trying to deceive people um by saying 50 percent when it was really just one person who failed the exam and and as this explanation gives you know another thing about st statistics is it's a, it, it, there's a certain science to it and it, it, it would, it, you know, require you to have a large enough sampling for it to be meaningful. Um, you know, related to this one also, polls are a form of statistics that, you know, sometimes are conveyed to us as a very important piece of information we need to know as an election is approaching. Um, but at one time I remember hearing and I, you know, I imagine, I don't know whether this is true anymore. If it is true, it's, it's ridiculous. But at one point, even years ago, when cell phones had been around for a while, I remember hearing on the news, somebody acknowledge, of course, these polls are only um, taken from people with landlines. And I thought, who the hell has a landline? Um, so it went to show, okay, they would say this many people um, you know, are leaning this way, you know, in this poll about this upcoming election. And it was this thing of going of people that have landlines, but you know, that probably skewed the polls in this way where, you know, my thinking at the time was, well, most of those people are probably older people because, uh, nobody I know who's younger has a landline. So it's just one more example in that realm of statistics. Um, and so I'll give one more example, but there are many on here. And so, you know, hopefully you've read this sheet, but, um, um, this one, it has a, another Latin name here, po post hoc ergo propter hoc, um, which translates as after this, therefore, because of this. And what this has to do is with, what this has to do with is, the idea of understanding <clears throat> kind of a cause and effect relationship or the absence of one. So it says this fallacy known as post hoc reasoning assumes that because two events occur close together in time, the first must be the cause of the second. So the example they give is every time a Republican is elected president, a recession follows. If we want to avoid another recession, we should elect a Democrat. And again, this is not me arguing this, but this is just the example. So, so the person arguing this example is saying every time a Republican is elected, a recession follows. So to avoid a recession, we should elect a Democrat. The analysis says, even if it were true that recessions always occur during the tenure of Republican presidents, no causal connection has been established. You know, the other example that comes to mind here is I remember hearing this argument at one point that was something like, um, uh, there were no serial killings before the invention of cinema. Therefore, cinema is the cause of serial killings. Um, uh, I think with that one, you can probably see that that's an absurd, uh, assumption to make because there's, you know, in, inside that argument as it's delivered, there's nothing that proves that cinema caused uh, serial killings but somebody you know made the mistake or 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 made the logical um f you know fallacy of assuming that just because something preceded something it was the cause of that thing more is needed to understand um or to establish that you know in this case that uh if if it were true that a recession follows the election of a republican that that seals the deal on that that election was was the cause of the recession okay so there are many more examples but those are just a few and i thought i would just uh explain a few of them for you but um these are important to know about and it doesn't include like the famous straw man argument which is when you build which is when you essentially misrepresent the other side's argument as being more absurd than than it actually is, so you can easily tear it down 
But the problem is you're misrepresenting what the other side is saying. That's a very common one as well that's not on this list. But anyway, I hope that helps you to understand these a little better. Thanks.